Yuji and Toto are the dynamic duo of Jujutsu Kaisen. Their chemistry in battle is second to literally none and they work super well with each other. Unlike other duos who have to prep beforehand, these two as a duo go into each fight they have unexpectedly. And in today's video, let's put them up to the test. What's up guys, Russ is Gambler here, and in today's video, we've got a banger. Yuji and Toto have teamed up to fight Mahito in the latest episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, and I noticed something. These two had only two fights together against two disaster curse spirits. So with the help of Kyle Breeze today, we'll be putting this version of the duo up against the other disaster curse spirits, Hanami, Jogo, and Dagon. Kyle's channel will be in the description of this video. Do make sure to check him out. But of course, right before that, if you enjoy JJK content like this, go ahead and subscribe. You'll get more videos and we'll both be happy. Now to start off, of course I think it would be super productive to map out just how strong this duo is as to gauge where they are in comparison to their enemies today. Yuji and Toto are absolute monsters, especially compared to the modern day sorcerers as both of them are pretty much grade 1 sorcerers, Toto just being straight up a grade 1 sorcerer and Mei Mei directly calling Yuji comparable to a grade 1 even without a cursed technique. In terms of how strong they are individually, obviously Yuji is an absolute beast even without cursed energy and this is actually clarified by two people. First is Megami who outright says if everyone from Tokyo and Kyoto fought him at once about cursed energy, Itadori would win, which is crazy because that actually includes Maki and Toto, mainly Maki. So this directly means that Yuji is comfortably a lot stronger than Maki, not just a regular amount stronger, a lot stronger than her, even if he doesn't have cursed energy. And of course during the death painting arc, this is just completely cemented by the narrator where the narrator actually says he possesses physical prowess and a fight sense greater than that of Maki Zeni. And he was given the power of curses, so outright he's just physically physically stronger than Maki even though cursed energy and he actually has a greater fight sense on top of that than even Maki which is impressive considering Maki's fight sense is incredible. And put this on top of the fact that he actually can use cursed energy and he can use it to a very great extent not just from what Gojo and Naname had actually taught him but further what Toto had actually taught him during Goodwill which gave him a big power up and then he got a further power up on top of that when he actually hit the black flashes and in case you aren't aware hitting a black flash for the first time yes it actually does give you a temporary boost where you go to 120% of your full potential that always happens when you hit a black flash but after you hit it for the first time you actually do get a permanent buff where you just become stronger because your understanding of cursed energy and your core of cursed energy what you can understand and see actually goes deeper than normal back to all this on top of his physical strength yes he is an absolute beast undoubtedly a grade one and i would actually put him on the higher levels of grade one and that higher tier amongst characters such as domain expansion megumi choso who we saw him outright fight against though of course he did lose to choso is very powerful even with help from ekamaru and of course now bito though i would probably put now so in terms of the great ones on a class of his own maybe it wouldn't be too great but he is quite monstrous he is the head of the zenin clan and as we saw he is just a beast as he was bullying a disaster curse before the domain expansion came in and destroyed him without question yuji is a monster and of course this goes double for toto there recently came out a jujutsu technical college student skill graph which told us where all the students actually lie in terms of how good they are at things and toto ranked amongst the highest of all the students and yes that actually includes Hakari and Yuta, which is insane. In terms of Jujutsu Sense, he's 10 out of 10. In terms of classroom learning, he's 10 out of 10. And motor skills, so this is your skills without cursed energy, he is 9 out of 10. It is phenomenal how powerful Toto is. And when you factor into account that Satoru Gojo actually does consider Toto to be someone who can surpass special grade as, when Gojo actually says, oh, the next generation will surpass special grade, Toto is one of the students whose pictures actually does come up. And considering the fact that he's a grade one sorcerer only at 18 years old, while while he's still in high school, it does make sense why he has that potential. And also do remember that he has a simple domain, the new shadow style, which he learned from Yuki, which is a big tool to have in his arsenal. And his curse technique, the boogie woogie, is very broken. I know a lot of the times people underrate it for some reason, but when you actually fight in groups and especially when you have a teammate with you, that technique can be infinitely useful. And the way it can be used in combos and to completely disorient your enemy and trap them, they just won't be able to hit you and you'll be able to get the easiest shots on them from places where they can't even expect it. It is quite a powerful curse technique, especially when you have a partner as Toto actually does. He has his brother <laughs> with him in this fight. Okay, so now that we've established just how strong these two are, let's set some ground rules. 
first off, Jogo, Hanami, and Dagon will not have their domain expansions. Yes, I know this sounds crazy, but it's very clear that if each one of them had the domains, our duel would die in an instant. We actually see this firsthand with the Mahito fight. If Yuji didn't have Sukuna, a domain would have finished them a long time ago. So we're just putting the other disaster cursed spirits in the same exact predicament where they can't use their domains. But another thing we're granting is Yuji and Toto the use of Playful Cloud. It'll just be one of course, and they'll skillfully use it in order to defeat who stands before them. So with all that said, let's get into Yuji and Toto versus Joe Goat. Now, how would these two actually fare up against someone like Joko? And just for clarification, we're not going to give anyone their domain expansions, as was actually explained before by Restless Gambler. Again, because they would instantly defeat Yuji and Toto. It's really simple, to be honest, because imagine Dagon. <laughs> Even in base, when he was getting washed by Naobito, he activates his domain, and he not only no diffs Naobito, but he no diffs Nanami with his domain expansion alone. And I would consider Nanami and Naobito as a duo stronger than Yuji and Toto, specifically because of Naobito, because he's that strong. But remember, it was confirmed by Nanami and Naobito where they both say Jogo is on a completely different level compared to Dagon. They straight up say that when they actually see Jogo. So someone weaker than Jogo, right? Dagon with his domain expansion was able to do that to two extremely strong grade ones, especially Naobito, probably the strongest grade one, and he would have no diffed him with his domain had it just been a true 2v1 against the two, it's not even a question that Dagon not only would have done that to Yuji and Toto, but someone who's stronger Jogo would have done the same to Yuji and Toto if Jogo actually activates his domain or can do that. And of course, Haname was actually directly said by Gege in a volume extra to be as strong as Jogo, though Haname would lose to Jogo solely due to an elemental matchup, but in terms of how strong they are, they are actually equal. Now how to fight between Yuji and Toto versus Jogo Go? I actually think this would be an incredibly fast matchup. It was actually said in a volume extra that if Jogo were to ever receive five of Itadori's black flashes on top of Toto's curse technique infused playful cloud strike as Haname actually had, he would die instantly, though of course he himself does actually comment, well those attacks would never hit me. Because obviously his speed is tremendous, it's been hyped up several times and do not think he's slow. Many people underrate his speed because he specifically fought characters such as Gojo and Sukuna and been blitzed by them. He's not slow by any means, though he may seem as so because he's fought two of the strongest characters in the series. But obviously his defense is where he's lacking. Now, I don't want to say it's lacking because five black flashes from Yuji and then right after being hit by Toto's playful cloud that's infused with cursed energy, that would kill a lot of people. So I don't want to say he's that weak in terms of durability either, it's just if you really were to take all of that, it's not really surprised that he would die. I mean, I'm pretty sure half of that would actually delete Dagger. And any grade 1 sorcerer, and I truly mean any grade 1 sorcerer out there, now, Bito, Choso, Megumi, Yuji, Toto himself, if they were to take five black flashes from Yuji and then get hit by Toto's cursed energy infused playful cloud strike, that would kill any grade 1 sorcerer. So again, it's not that his defense is insanely weak, it's just that Hanamaze is very powerful in comparison and many people confuse that to mean he's got horrible durability. Now how would this fight actually go? I think it depends on if Jogo can just instantly kill them before they can actually just switch about or they can actually hit Jogo themselves. Now, if they can just trap Jogo in a corner, and somehow they can just hit some black flash and a playful cloud swing, then we know Jogo's just dead. There's no questioning it. And of course, even if Jogo is faster, you have to factor in, because Toto's Jujutsu Sense and motor skills are so fast, as is Yuji's, would he be able to react in time to just clap? That's all he needs to do. He doesn't actually need to dodge, he just needs to clap, and then he could save either himself or Yuji from instantly being killed by Jogo. That's the real question here. If he can do that, then I do think they can beat Jogo, since it would actually disorient Jogo, and they would basically be able to get a few hits in and that's pretty much all they would need to put him on the ropes and finish him off because they definitely wouldn't be playing around and they'd be trying to finish it as soon as possible. However, if Jogo truly is too fast, I actually think Jogo just pretty much kills them both instantly as the fight starts because he's just that much faster and he would just incinerate them. He has one of the highest destructive capabilities in the entire series and that's unquestionable because again, he is offensively based, he's a volcano. We have seen both in the manga and especially in the anime how destructive he can be. That's all this fight really does come down to. I think he would be an insanely fast fight, either Toto reacts in time and they beat Jogo's ass badly, or he can't react in time and Jogo would actually just kill both of them pretty quickly, I'm gonna be honest. It really does depend on where you skill Jogo. I've seen a lot of people underrate and overestimate his speed. Some people do like to overrate it specifically because he was blitzing and destroying Naname and Naobito, though of course the narrator does specifically say, had Naobito had his other arm, he wouldn't have died 
that quickly or he would have at least been able to dodge better and do take into account Naname and Downbeat so were half dead and they were also very low on cursed energy and Jogo did catch them by surprise so that was also a big factor into it but of course don't underrate it either because it was hyped up by many characters that Jogo's speed is incredible by himself and of course by Dagon and by others so who you actually think wins depends on how fast you think Jogo is compared to Yuji and Toto. Now similar to Kaio I do think it comes down to a coin flip. Jogo is extremely fast that's his forte but in this matchup it's a matter of who he focuses on first. If it's Toto then it might be Raps but if it's Yuji there can be some wiggle room for Boogie Woogie. But again I'd like to emphasize that this is still a toss up. Don't underestimate Jogo. Before Kyle talks about Hanami versus the duo, I'll be talking about Dagon versus Yuji and Toto. Now, this one was a tricky one to think about, mainly due to the fact that, well, Dagon is a domain expansion merchant. I actually told Kyle this, it's insane how much of a difference Dagon's base is to when he's in his domain expansion. His endless swarm of fish can literally be divided 50-50 to both Yuji and Toto and they'd be done right there and then. But he's in base, so let's get into the battle. Like Kyle told us earlier, Yuji and Toto are just completely superior to Maki in physical prowess. And well, let's just look at what Maki is able to accomplish during her time fighting Dagon. With her regular curse tool, she's able to block Dagon and come out unfazed from a kick from him. Then when she acquires Playful Cloud, she's able to actually damage Dagon. Playful Cloud attributes your physical prowess, so if either Toto or Yuji hits Dagon with this, they're doing tons of damage to him. However, I would like to have it known that Dagon has some kind of defensive mechanism where he surrounds himself with water. This proves useful against, uh, well, well, some attacks in the manga. In the anime, he doesn't even attempt to use it properly, so I don't really understand what they're cooking with that. But we'll say that this is an effective defense technique that Dagon can use. Now, the argument of whether or not Yuji and Soto could get through the defenses with just speed like they did in the manga is up for debate. But something more concrete on how they can combat through this is the use of boogie woogie now i think it's plausible that if dagon uses his technique in the midst of getting cooked Toto can just switch with him so yuji can cook him outside of the barrier i don't think this is too far-fetched because the barrier isn't exactly on dagon but regardless this entire fight is just a mismatch he just doesn't have the durability to tank a full barrage from these two and he doesn't have the speed to counteract the confusing nature of toto's technique oh yeah and his base fish would get violated by either toto or yuji if he's able to even pull them off so there's zero arguments for dagon winning in base with his domain obviously he demolishes them but now i'll let kayo cook up and he'll tell us about hanami versus the duo Now Haname versus Yuji and Toto is pretty interesting because we actually did get to see it in the series itself and we do actually know what Haname's domain expansion is. It is a sea of flowers and the sun is shining. It is heavenly light and it is filled with those kind of tree things that she fired down on Gojo and a domain expansion is called Daikokai and it is a very powerful domain expansion as when she actually starts the domain the flower that she has on her chest that builds up cursed energy fires at her opponents and instantly destroys them and her sure hit does seem to be an earth-like attack so it could actually be possible that her sure hit allows her to fire off the flower on her shoulder multiple times which if it is that that's incredible and of course her domain expansion has a passive ability where just by being in the domain you are constantly losing your will to fight so if you do remember when this hit gojo and yuji when gojo actually experienced curse technique burnout so that's why he was hit by it they actually just completely lost the will to fight and were calm in this domain you're calm all the time which is bad because not having the will to fight is dangerous as for how this fight would go because we're just saying it's base to base I just don't think Haname has any chance of winning. I do think Haname would actually be better because she would have had the experience of fighting them the first time so she would be used to Toto's curse technique and she would have actually been reinvigorated since we do see her during the Toto and Yuji fight deep into it. She's like, wow, this is a great fight. I'm enjoying fighting so much. And she did awaken that sort of lust for battle and I do think it's possible that she did get stronger if not just via the experience she got stronger. Granted it wouldn't help that much against Yuji and Toto but it's just something to note. But I do think Haname would unfortunately lose this fight since Haname is just a defensive fighter not an offensive base and of course she doesn't have a domain expansion if she did she would delete the two instantly but 
in base, she doesn't. Yuji and Toto would overwhelm Haname pretty badly, and when you consider into the fact that Yuji, when he just got two power-ups, was doing that to Haname, now that we've actually given him a few weeks to refine those powers, train a bit more, and just get accustomed to it, he's gonna be stronger. And Toto and Yuji also do have more experience of working together since it would be their second time doing so, not the first time. So unfortunately for Haname, I just don't think Haname can win this if it's just base Haname, not including the domain expansion. I understand the absolute tomfoolery these fights seem to be, but they're meant to reflect what is happening against Mahito right now. Mahito can't use his domain expansion because of Sukuna residing inside of Yuji, so he has to fight them both in base. This was just to emphasize the importance of matchups in JJK. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely, definitely, definitely check out Kyle's channel. He drops banger JJK videos. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.